Hey Panthers, this is Sabrina Olivares. And I'm Melissa Charia with FIU News. COVID-19 has affected the world in many ways. Schooling in particular has affected both children and adults. Miami-Dade County school officials propose a task force that will determine the reopening of schools in the fall. My co-anchor Sabrina Olivares has a closer look on this story. Faculty, staff, and families across Miami-Dade County voice both their concerns and expectations for the upcoming school year. At this time, um, there, there is a possibility that there will be a virtual component um, somehow, maybe returning back physically, but staggering schedules or having block schedules. Those are the type of um, ideas that have been proposed. It's like a blended model. Surveys were sent out to parents asking if they are open to a 50-50 schedule in the fall, half of the time physically in school and the other half in continued virtual learning from home. I said yes to that, that I would feel a little more comfortable until things pick up and hopefully whatever the new normal is until we figure that out. But I would feel more comfortable maybe having him here like two times a week, three times a week, and then the other, you know, just to have that physical contact with friends. Many parents are still concerned about schools reopening this fall, but some faculty and staff remain optimistic about the upcoming school year. Matter Garden second grade teacher Lisette Piloto is hopeful of reuniting with students again. If it's safe enough for the teachers to go back, then it should be safe enough for the kids. I don't think they'll be putting any kids in, you know, in a bad situation. Plans for the fall include downsized classes, desks spread apart six feet, and mandatory protective gear for students and faculty. So our school um, is following actually different, uh, different uh, sources. So we have the CDC, we have the federal government, we have the state policies, and then we have local municipalities. I asked my second grade son if he wanted to continue virtual learning or if he preferred going back to physical school. Actual school because I want to play with my friends more. There's been a little more homework and it's been a little more harder because it like freezes sometimes. As of now, the task force has not been approved and no official word has yet been made on whether or not schools will reopen this fall. This is Sabrina Olivares reporting for South Florida Media Network. Wow, I hope the officials make a decision soon. I do too. I know a few parents who are eager for schools to reopen just so they can get back to work. Reporter Camila Fernandez takes a closer look at what one parent has to say about returning to work without a sitter. Due to the coronavirus, schools, daycares, and summer camps all across the nation have been forced to temporarily shut down. I asked nurse from Memorial Hospital, Greta Alonso, if it was difficult for her to work with no place to leave her kids. Yes, it has been very difficult during this time of COVID, um, trying to find someone to take care of my baby for me to go to work since I am a nurse. Um, but now um, work has been affected by me working less hours, which translates in making less money, and, and that is definitely affected, has affected me. I also asked if she wanted to go back to work full time. I do, but until my baby doesn't go to daycare full time, I cannot go back to work full time. This is Camila Fernandez reporting from South Florida Media Network. Thanks, Camila. I know it's tough for parents right now. Yeah, I can't imagine. Parents are not the only ones stressed out during times like this. Students also look forward to school reopening this fall. Reporter Genesis Carrero tells us more from a student's point of view. Coronavirus completely changed learning environments, making them remote for many. And although it is unknown when students will be able to go back on campus, it is speculated that it may be in the fall. Some students have not been able to adapt to this remote learning style, like FIU student Brian Ruska. I can't really focus on my studies when I'm home. That's why I would use FIU's campus 99% of the time to work because that's where I felt most at ease most concentrated. Although Brian is very optimistic in his opinion, it's important to note that not everyone is as ready to go back as Brian is, worrying they'll still be putting themselves at risk and their close ones at risk. From South Florida Media Network, this is Genesis Carrero. Thanks, Genesis. Many students say virtual learning can be difficult. What do you think, Sabrina? I wonder if remote learning is going to basically become the new norm. That's what it's looking like. Speaking of schools, universities introduced students to the CARES Act, 
which assists them financially throughout this transition. Yes, Sabrina. In fact, in late March, the CARES Act provided $14 billion to universities across the nation, an effort to assist students financially. Genesis Carrera also interviewed FIU students to get their perspective on this. COVID-19 has financially impacted many around the world, but some students in particular have had difficulties continuing their studies due to loss of income during the pandemic. Through the FIU CARES Act, students who are able to provide sufficient proof of bills will be granted funds to help keep their lifestyle afloat. CARES Act Ambassador Jonathan Espino spoke on how to access the application. Google FIU CARES Act on a Google search engine, but you can also just go directly on the website by typing in go.fiu.edu slash e aid requests and you're on your way to receive some benefits if you're in need. According to the Department of Education, the federal government has provided $19 million for FIU to help its students. Students providing sufficient documentation will be able to receive the funds that they need for help. I actually received an email from FIU, built up um, an application, and then I received another email to actually uh, submit a second application. While Gianni Jaramillo is one of thousands of students who received aid during the pandemic, there are plenty of neglected students like Blair Wells who have not received aid. Bills and stuff are still due. You know, they're expected to be paid. Unfortunately, um, there's no money coming in and I didn't get any additional help from unemployment or from the CARES Act. But they did say that if they received any additional funding, that they would reevaluate my application and potentially send me financial help. For some students, the CARES Act was a way to help them catch up on their bills during the pandemic. But those who are ineligible for this relief are still looking for help. This is Genesis Carrero from South Florida Media Network. Thanks, Genesis. It seems like they are trying to help the students, but many students did not benefit from the CARES Act. Reporter Brian Fuentes interviewed one student from Florida National University who was not granted the financial support he was hoping for. Every sector in our country has been touched by the COVID-19 pandemic. Students have been one of the most affected. What happened was basically I was going to school and working part-time and with all this COVID-19 uh, stuff, I lost my job, uh, basically closed down and I wasn't able to work anymore. So I, I automatically went and applied for the government's help uh, which I haven't gotten yet. Um, and then I heard something about uh, your university, your schools helping you out as well, some type of help. And I applied for that. I uh, did all the paperwork that they requested. Uh, and they told me they would get back and meet uh, within, you know, two weeks, span of two weeks. Uh, well, they did get back at me and told me I wasn't eligible. Uh, it was kind of confusing because, you know, my friends and I are in the same situation as me and they got the help, but I haven't yet. Millions of students around the country like Rolando are concerned about the same situation and are demanding answers to the same problem. More information about the issue needs to be released. Wow, thanks Brian. There are more students who lack support from their university. Reporter Jamia Henry will inform us about a young lady who didn't receive the CARES Act email. In late March, the CARES Act approved some and denied others, but students like Brianne Ema were three months late to being informed. If I was more aware of the information of the CARES Act at uh, the time it was sent to me, um, I do think I would have taken it um, and I do think it would have helped a lot because um, currently it's just me providing for my family since I'm the only one who's able to work and work from home. So I think that would have helped at the time a lot, but we did uh, manage to get by even without the um, help of the CARES Act. This is Jamia Henry from South Florida Media Network. Thanks, Jamia. I wonder where the money is going. What about you, Sabrina? It's a question that definitely needs answering. Um, you know, it's interesting because if students are not receiving the financial support, then who is? That's a great question. Well, there you have it. Thank you for watching. I'm Melissa Charia. And I'm Sabrina Olivares with FIU News.